Well, hello, everybody, and my name is Jeffrey Davis, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs, and this is our special edition from FEI Financial Executives International. That means my co-host is the one and the only Evan Macedo from Sapers and Wallach and FEI, our partner. Welcome, Evan. Hey, thank you, Jeffrey. It's a pleasure to be here once again, and uh, once again, we have a very exciting interview ahead of us. Well, you know, and I noticed that you're so geared up for this interview, it looks like you have two mics in front of you. <laughs> well, one was not good enough for you, Evan. Hey, just uh, want to make sure everybody can hear me loud and clear. I'm sure, especially the one that's as big as you. Uh, our next guest is Leslie Saul, founder, LSNA Architects and Interiors. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, so tell us about LSNA and, you know, arch and, uh, you know, especially during these changing economic times, how are architectural firms dealing with all the transitions? But uh, welcome again. Well, it's, um, it has not been easy for some of us on the smaller side. I think the large firms have had large projects to keep them going. We're only six people, and I've tried to keep everyone on board through this time period, and, um, and work is starting to come in. So I, that's, I think we've turned a corner. But architecture, when you say you do architecture and interior design, people understand what that is. So, um, but the basic questions that we always get is, what is your specialty? So. We, uh, we tend to want to, uh, what our purpose is to help people get what they want using architecture and interior design to, to create the environments they need for whether they work, play, age, live, or learn. So those five practice areas over time, uh, we found, I founded this company in December of 1992. So we're 27 and a half years into this. We've survived three major recessions, and uh, we're going to survive this one. And I think that uh, the problem solving skills from one area help the other area too. So we actually um, really love the variety. That's, uh, that's great. And I know you guys do a uh, phenomenal job building out beautiful spaces, customized spaces. Um, but yes. right now everybody's uh, working from home and I know that you have some thoughts on, uh, you know, what, what are some of the biggest challenges that either employees or employers are facing while working from home? Well, that's what I was wondering, too. You sort of stole my question or you were reading my, uh, my mind as usual, I, especially architects, because my image of working with architectural firms, I've had quite a few clients in the past, is it's always been such a collaborative environment, an op it, like the, a real open collaboration. And now it's different. Well, there, oh, wow, that's a whole different tack on it. But um, let me answer your question, Jeffrey, which is I think that uh, it has been surprising, I think, to everybody how much can be accomplished with video calls. Mm -hmm. And um, we've actually developed a technique where, where real samples get sent to the client. So they have the client, they have the real samples in hand, we have real samples in hand, and we would discuss them video call we can um, actually see them and make decisions together as if we were in the same room, which is pretty amazing. And from a collaboration of internal collaboration, we have um, daily check-in calls and we also, um, we also do uh, video calls where we share the screen and we actually can mark up on the screen changes. And so we're still collaborating, it's amazing over the miles, which I think since we have a Miami office is maybe will help our, our long distance uh, clients feel more comfortable that we've, we've, we work basically long distance locally. So the, when the working from home piece, I think is really an, is a separate issue, which is do P, are people set up to be their most effective selves from home? And I think one of the, the three basic challenges are ergonomics, Wi-Fi, and security. So from an ergonomic point of view, when you're at the office, what our clients are complaining about when they're working from home is they miss their adjustable table that goes up and down. They miss their ergonomic chair. They don't have a dining room chair is not an ergonomic chair. They're missing all their little monitor arms that they can set the monitors at exactly the right heights. They miss their lap, laptop holders. They're keyboard trays and their footrests. So these ergonomic tools that everyone has, that not everyone has, but many companies offer to their employees don't exist at home. And a lot of people don't even have a dedicated space at home. 
So those are issues that we need to address if this is going to be long, longer term. The Wi-Fi at work, people have fast and secure Wi-Fi. At home, who knows? And if people are going to Starbucks, when Starbucks opens up to, to go do work, that's totally insecure environment. So this idea of security, not just um, locked drawers, which is also something you have at the office that you don't have at home, but security from a health point of view. Are you wearing a mask when you go out? We need the employees to be healthy and we need them to follow practice good behaviors for the benefit of the company. So it's kind of interesting when you don't have that physical knowledge. Of course, we didn't I, yeah, have that. And I, I hear you with having an ergonomic uh, work environment. I, I know I sit on a wooden bench at home and boy, does my back hurt me at the end of the day. Yes, we we actually designed a, a physical therapy um, office that we email blasted about a couple weeks ago. and they have had a lot of calls. They're only, well, I think they're now starting to take regular patients, but they were only able to take sur post-surgical patients. And there are so many people who are suffering right now from bad ergonomics. And uh, I, I imagine your company can help, uh, you know, a lot of us working from home to redesign maybe our, uh, you know, our own workspaces. So That's we can right. alleviate some of those issues. Uh, and Jeffrey, were you gonna say something? Well, that's it. I mean, I've heard that, uh, you know, a lot of companies are not planning on a full scale return to office ever uh, on only a minimal and with a rotation. Some companies are. So I'm thinking you know, the, the redesign of office space, but also the redesign of home space. You know, are you looking Correct. at both, both options? Correct. We, I think we think that long term, this is going to be a mix of working from home and working we have one employee who will be almost 20 years. July 4th is uh, weekend was her last weekend at home. And I mean, at work all the time. She came after that on July 5th or whatever day it was then 20 years ago, uh, two days in the office and three days at home. And I think that kind of setup is much more plausible for a long-term solution. But speaking about the whole security and mask thing it, it brings to mind a discussion with an insurance agent in miami that there are workers comp claims happening because people working from home are is considered wherever they're working is considered an extension of the office and so they're making these workers comp claims for tripping because there's a toy in the room that you're working or you tripped on your dining room chair and that's your office and therefore it's a workers comp claim and we even heard of one that was a guy was in the backyard, his own backyard, which is clearly not part of the office, home or, or office. And uh, he tripped and he claimed that he was thinking about work and that's why he tripped. Now, I don't know if that claim ever got, you know, it may not win anything, but the point that's is that- That's <laughs> unbelievable. The point is that people are, maybe it's because they're cranky in general, that they're going to be more likely to do these kinds of suits. But I think it's interesting from an entrepreneurial point of view, your employees, um, you really need to think of their home office as your office. And, and it needs to be your responsibility. You need to buy that the good ergonomic things for home as well as for office, which we do. I, I was thinking about uh, this radio interview and Evan preparing while I was in the shower this morning and I, uh, and I hit my head against the shower wall. So Evan, you're going to be receiving a letter from my attorney today. I just want you to know that. <laughs> wow, you know, that's going to be the most exciting news I've got all day, Jeff. So thank you. I look forward to it. You know, I, there, you know, you can't be surprised anymore what people, what lengths people will go to to file a lawsuit. So, but it is good for employers to understand that that you think you're saving all this money on your real estate because you can take less space. But their home space is your space too. And not everyone has a big dining room table like I do. They might only have a studio apartment. It, it's really more complex than, than I think um, people realize when they say, oh, everyone will just work from home. Yeah, Evan, I just want you to know, uh, I've already uh, uh, engaged Leslie. She's gonna be showing up at my house today to put in padded, padded showers. Oh, so, uh, fantastic. <laughs> with, with, with the Radio Entrepreneurs logos on the wall. Uh, Leslie, we've been speaking with Leslie Saul, founder, LSNA Architecture, Architecture and Interiors with Evan Macedo, Sapers and Wallach and FBI. Uh, Leslie, if someone wants to speak with you and get your advice on these things, how would they find you? 
The easiest way is to go to our website, lesliesaul.com, L-E-S-L-I-E-S-A-U-L, lesliesaul.com. We have a contact us page that gets sent to three people. So hopefully someone will respond to you very quickly. And you also can direct chat with me on the website. It'll have a little box come up. Can I help you? And you can just click on that and we can text directly. Oh, that's nice. And Evan, if someone's looking for you or FEI, uh, how would they find you? Absolutely. So uh, if they're looking at me at Sa for Sapers and Wallach, uh, you can just email info at sapers-wallach.com. Or if you're looking for more information on FEI Financial Executives International, you can just go to our website, feiboston.org, and you can get connected with a great group of business entrepreneurs from Boston. Great. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being on the show today. Uh, Leslie, continued success. We look forward to speaking to you again, thank hopefully you. over the next year. Ev uh, Evan, I know I'm going to be speaking to you again quite soon. And FEI will be signing off. We'll be returning with more stories after this short break.